Hey, welcome back to Bear Squared. In this video, we're going to be doing square roots, talking about radicals and thirds. So let's look at the first part then. It says the square root of a number a is a non-negative, which, when squared, gives a. So, for example, the square root of 25 is equal to 5 which is 5 squared is equal to 25. 5 times 5 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. Hey, Terry the Turtle says this symbol here is called the radical or the square root sign. Radicals and thirds. Any number written with the radical sign, this sign here is called a radical. An irrational radical is called a third. Now look at this then. The radicals root 7 and root 8 are examples of thirds. Why do you think that is? Let's just check something out. The root of 7 is equal to 2.6457 and it carries on. Let's check out the root of 8. The root of 8 is equal to 2.828422 and it carries on. We've truncated the value but it carries on. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Let's have a look at the next example. Root 9 is a radical but not a third. That's because root 9 is equal to 3 which is a rational number. So the difference between a radical and a third is that a third has an irrational result. So look at these questions. It says state whether the following radicals are thirds. If the radical is a third, find its value correct to two decimal places. And if the radical is not a third, find its exact value. So pause the video here, have a go for yourself, questions A, B, C and D, and then I'll show you the answers once we're done. So first thing first, let's get out our calculator and let's just do the root of 10 and see what we get. So the root of 10 is 3.16227 and it carries on. So therefore it's not a radical, it's a third. Well, it is a radical, but it's a third. Uh, and we can write this down as approximately 3.16. Let's look at the next one. Root of 100. Now the root of 100 we know is equal to 10 because it's a perfect square. Okay. And then therefore the answer, of course, is just... 10. Right, root of 65. Okay, let's check out the root of 65. The root of 65 is 8.06225 and it carries on. So we can approximate the value as 8.06 and that's it for two decimal places. Right, let's look at the next one, root of 6. Okay, so the root of 6 is equal to 2.44948 and let's remember that's just truncated, it carries on. So that means that we can approximate it as 2.45. Okay, so let's clear this out of the way and let's move on. We need to consider some rules for square roots. Okay, now the first rule that we're going to talk about is since 0 times 0 is equal to 0, therefore the square root of 0 is also equal to 0. That's rule number one. Just pause the video, make sure you write that down, okay, and then we'll move on to a couple of more rules. Okay. The square root of 5 is the positive number which, when multiplied by itself, gives 5. So let's have a look at this then. The root of 5 squared can be written as the root of 5 times the root of 5, which equals to 5. So therefore we're saying the root of any value squared is equal to the root of a times the root of a, which is equal to a. So for all possible numbers a, root of a times root of a is equal to a. Any root times by itself is equal to the value under that root. So here, let's do a few questions then. We'll try part A, which is the root of 11 squared, and then part B, which is 2 root 3 all squared. So we get this then. Root of 11 squared is root 11 times root 11. So it's equal to 11. Okay, part B then. We've got 2 root 3 all squared. That's going to be 2 root 3 times 2 root 3, which can be written as 2 times 2. Look, we've got a 2 multiplied by 2, and then we've got root 3 multiplied by root 3. So we've got 2 times 2 times 3. Remember, 3 comes from root 3 times root 3. And 2 times 2 times 3 it gives us the value of 12. Simplify the following questions, part A, B and C. Pause the video here and when you're done, I'll show you the answer. Okay, so for part A then, we get root 5 times root 5. When you multiply a root by itself, you end up getting the value under that root, which in this case is just 5. Part B, 2 root 13 times 2 root 13. We have 2 times 2 times root 13 times root 13. These two root 13s, root 13 times root 13 gives you the value of 13. So 2 times 2 times 13 gives us the value of 52. 
finally then, 3 times root 3 squared, so 3 times root 3 times 3 times root 3, there's a lot of 3's there, we end up getting 3 times 3 times root 3 times root 3, like that. And remember, root 3 times root 3 just gives us 3, so 3 times 3 times 3, which gives us 27. Okay, rules for square roots. Here's another rule. Notice that root 2 times root 3 all squared is the same as saying root 2 squared times root 3 squared. And remember, root 2 squared is just 2, root 3 squared is just 3, which gives us a value of 6. So consider alternatively, we could have root 2 times root 3 as root 6. So let's replace this part here with root 6 all squared. So root 6 squared is going to be root 6 times root 6, and we know when we multiply root by itself, we end up getting the value under that root, which is just 6. So then, for all positive values a and b, root of a times by root of b can be written under the same square root, which is root of a times b. Now pause the video and write that down, because that's one of the rules that you're going to be using. Okay, so here's another rule for square roots. By rearranging root 2 times root 3 equals to root 6, we can get the following. Look at this. Root 6 divided by root 2 is equal to root 3. That's basically the same thing, but rearranged. All I've done here is I've taken this part here, divide by root 2, that cancels out. We end up getting divided by root 2. So root 6 over root 2 is equal to root 3. That's that part there. Okay. Alternatively, okay, what we could get is this part here, which says root 6 over root 3 is equal to root 2. How do we get that? So basically, if we divided this side by root 3, you divide this side by root 3, that would cancel out, and you would end up getting root 6 over root 3 is equal to root 2. That's exactly what we've got here. Okay, so what are we saying then? We're saying for all positive values a and b, we can get root a over root b written under one radical sign, which is the square root of a divided by b. So pause the video and write that down because you're going to be using it in the forthcoming questions. Okay, simplify the following. A, B, C and D. I'll pause the video here, attempt the questions and then I'll show you what I got. So remember we're simplifying. Root 5 times by root 7 can be written under the same radical, which is the square root of 35. Okay, look at part B then. We can write this as root 20 over 10. So we end up getting square root of 2. Okay, part C says the square root of 50 over 5. Now we already have it under one square root sign, so all we need to do is simplify that fraction to make square root of 10. Part B, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the numerator. So we get square root of 7 times 6, which is 42, divided by the square root of 2. Now we can write this under one square root, so it's a square root of 42 over 2, which is really simplified down to the square root of 21. Okay, so well done so far. Let's move on. Let's look at um, radicals in simplest form. Some radicals can be written in a form so that the number under the square root sign is made smaller. For example, the root of 12. We know that the root of 12 can also be written as the root of 4 times 3. 4 and 3 are factors of the number 12. The root of 4 times 3 can be written as root of 4 times the root of 3. We can separate the factors under their own square root. Since we know that 2 times 2 is equal to 4, we also know that the square root of 4 is equal to 2. We can simplify root 4 because it's a perfect square. 2 squared is equal to 4, so that means that we end up getting 2 root 3. If a radical is written so the number under the square root sign is the smallest integer possible, we say it is in simplest radical form. Okay, so here's a couple of radicals that I want you to simplify. Write this in simplest form. Pause the video here, and once you're done, I'll give you the answers. So root 8 can be written as the root of 4 and the root of 2. So root 4 times root 2. 4 is a perfect square, which will give us 2 root 2. Root 20, let's have a look at root 20. Root 20 can be written as root 4 times root 5. And root 4 is 2, so we end up getting 2 root 5. Let's look at c then. So c is root of 18. We can write that as a root of 9 times the root of 2. What do you reckon this is going to be? 3 root 2. Because root 9 can be written as 3. Okay, so 3 root 2. Look at the next one. We end up getting 4 times root 2. Remember this is 16 times 2. The root of 16 times the root of 2. 
The next one is 3 root 3. This can be written as 9, so root 9 over root 3. And then we got 2 root 13. If we carry on, we get 4 root 3. Root 50 becomes 5 root 2. Why 5 root 2? Because it's root 25 times root 2, which is 5 root 2. And the final one, 108, can be written as 6 root 3, which is basically the root of 36 times the root of 3. Okay, we're nearly there. Last question, and I want you to solve this. Show that, using all the rules that you've learned so far, that the root of 69 divided by the root of 6 is equal to 4. I want you to show me two separate ways using the rule root of a over the root of b is equal to the root of a over b and then part b by first writing the root of 96 in its simplest form. So I'll pause the video here and have an attempt for part a and then I'll show you what I got. Okay, let's start off then. We can write the root of 96 divided by the root of 6 as the root of 96 divided by 6 under one square root sign. If we simplify this, we can write the root of 16. And the root of 16, we know we can write as root 4 times root 4. What happens when you multiply a root by itself? You end up getting the value under that root sign. So you end up getting the value of 4. Okay, let's look at part B. We're going to simplify root 96. So if we simplify root 96, we can get 4 times root 6. 4 times root 6 because it's 16. Root 16 times root 6. And root 16 can be written as 4. Okay, so we end up getting 4 root 6 over root 6. Now look what we can do. We can write 4 root 6 over 6, which is root 1. And root 1 is equal to the value of 1. So therefore, we end up getting 4 times 1, which in this case is 4. So there was a lot to cover for the rules of radicals or square root signs. So go back and watch this if you need to. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications for future videos. And check out these videos to amplify your math skills. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.